this appears to be just the latest example of a culture of cover-ups and political intimidation in this administration. It seems like the truth is hidden from the American people just long enough to make it through an election. If this hearing becomes essentially a bootstrap to continue the campaign and to prepare for 2014, we will be making a very, very serious mistake that was the scene at the Capitol on Friday as the House kicked off its hearings into the IRS. Senate Finance Committee holds its hearings this week. We're joined by two senators on that committee, Republican Rob Portman in Ohio, Democrat Bob Menendez from New Jersey. Also two congressmen from the House Committee looking into this, Republican Tom Price and Democrat Charles Rankew. Thank you, Rangel, excuse me. Thank you to all of you. Let me begin with you, Senator Portman. So this has now all been looked at, these IRS allegations, has been looked at by the White House, the Inspector General, of the IRS and this House committee has had its hearing so far. No evidence that the White House knew about the wrongdoing in Cincinnati. No evidence that the White House directed it in any way. Do you accept that first of all? And given that, what's the most important unanswered question for your hearings this week? Well, George, first, we just don't know yet. Uh, there was an audit done by the Inspector General, but we've not had an investigation yet. That's why a bipartisan investigation at the Senate Finance Committee and at the Ways and Means Committee is necessary. I also think a special counsel is going to end up being necessary here because it has to be independent of the White House. What we do know is that politics was put ahead of the public interest, and it was done so in two of the most sensitive areas of our government. Uh, one, of course, the Tax Collection Agency, which has this enormous power over all of us, and second, our national security. So, look, I was one of the people that sent a letter uh, March a year ago saying, what's going on here? We're hearing from all these conservative groups. There seems to be targeting. There seems to be a problem. The IRS uh, apparently took a look at it, responded to our letter, indicated there was no problem. Uh, but unfortunately, they were informed of it. And uh, within a week of our letter being responded to, they actually had a briefing, the deputy commissioner of the IRS, indicating that there were these problems. They never bothered to correct a record. So now you have, uh, over a year later, uh, finally the IG report coming out and them acknowledging it. So there's a there, there's a real concern here. Uh, Dave Camp just talked about, you know, basically putting politics ahead to get through the election. Maybe that was it. We don't know, but, but Senator, we need to get to the bottom you, of it. But there, there has been an investigation in the House has looked at, as you said, the, the IG. Have, have you seen any evidence that anyone outside that Cincinnati office, and you're in Cincinnati today, gave any kind of direction, any kind of political direction to the office? Look, George, we, we just don't know. Uh, we do know that there was a California office involved. We do know that the Washington office was very involved. Uh, we knew Lois Lerner was involved. So it wasn't just the Cincinnati office. I just find it very hard to believe that uh, lower level employees here in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, took this on themselves uh, and that it went on for a couple of years without anybody knowing about it. And again, we have information now based on the IG report that in fact the deputy commissioner of the IRS was made aware of this at least on May 3rd. Uh, I would think before because he asked his folks to go to Cincinnati to look into it in March of 2012 and yet they responded to a letter from Congress not telling the American people about this uh, a, a week earlier than that. So it, it, it seems to me that there's a lot of issues here we need to get to the bottom of. We need to find out what really happened and ensure that we can begin to regain some trust in our government. That's, that's my concern. Senator Menendez, you just heard a call for a special counsel. Do you think that's necessary? Well, I, I don't see it at this point. And look, you know, uh, even the chairman of the House Oversight Committee said you don't uh, start uh, accusing the IRS until you have an independent deep dive. And that, uh, that deep dive is what the Inspector General did. And uh, since we've uh, come to know what the Inspector General uh, has said, heads have rolled. There's a new leader at the agency. But I think there's two scandals here. And clearly what the IRS did in this regard is absolutely wrong and it's outrageous. It's a lack of ba uh, management and we should look legislatively as to whether we have to create any screens or filters uh, that they look at in the future so that they operate uh, more accordingly. But there's a second scandal. And that fact is, is that hundreds of millions of dollars have been used in C4s that are supposed to be used as nonprofit social welfare entities for political purposes. And it's pretty outrageous that the IRS went after small Tea Party groups when calling
Karl Rove is out there saying he's using these C4s to change the outcome of the next election. So I think both of those scandals have to be looked at. Two scandals. Congressman Price, you looked at this in the House Ways and Means Committee on Friday. You asked that question yes. about whether this so-called targeting was illegal. Have you seen any evidence that a crime was committed? Well, we don't know yet, as, as Senator Portman said. This is really chilling stuff, though, uh, George. Uh, the, the, the IRS was asking church groups what the, was the content of their prayer prayers to determine whether or not to give them uh, status, tax-exempt status, or book groups. What books were they reading? Would provide a book report. Uh, this, this is just the beginning, and I think it's really important to appreciate what Senator Portman started with, and that was that the IG report was an audit. It was not an investigation. This is just the beginning of this process, and we need to get to the bottom of it. We need to find out who made those decisions, hold them to account, and see how high up the chain uh, it went, and that's exactly what we'll so be do doing. So do you think a special counsel is needed as well? I think it's, uh, again, I think it's premature to to determine that. I, I do believe that the, that the committees of uh, jurisdiction in the House and in the Senate need to continue their vest investigation and determine exactly who made these decisions. These weren't just some, some individuals at a low level in the IRS. They don't make those kinds of decisions. You know that. The, the American people know that. What needs to be restored is trust. And that's the, well, that's except the real question Let me question bring this here. to Congressman Rangel because there's extensive uh, reporting in your hometown newspaper this morning, the New York Times, which suggested in some of this information is developed in the IG's report as well, that the extent higher ups in the IRS were involved, they actually ordered the uh, Cincinnati investigators to broaden their criteria, not to single out the Tea Party, not to have any political bias there. I think the biggest problem is that the tens of thousands of IRS workers that work hard uh, with all the stigma being tax uh, collectors uh, are getting a bad shake out of this. First of all, it is the law. Senator Mendez says this law lends itself to abuse. I don't think that gang in Cincinnati had the slightest clue as to find out whether or not people making contributions were involved in politics or whether they were involved in social welfare. Under the law, uh, it's not just an exclusive thing. And people were abusing this law. Whether they should have used these buzzwords for conservatives or liberal, it is wrong and outrageous where people are penalized for their political beliefs. But the law has been abused ever since it's been there. Senator Portman, how about that? Are you concerned about that, both Senator Menendez and, and Congressman Rangel saying there was a real potential for abuse here that deserved to be, that had to be overseen? George, here's the point. Uh, we can talk about whether the laws ought to be changed, and, and yes, I'm for tax reform, but the question is whether there was an unbiased, even-handed enforcement of the laws, and there was not. So to say, gee, maybe we should change the laws, that wasn't the issue here. What was happening in Cincinnati, and unfortunately other places in the country, including, as I said, California, Washington, D.C., was there was a bias. So we, we can complain about what the law says. This issue is about the enforcement of that law. The American people deserve to know that it's not being biased, that it's even-handed, that it's fair, particularly with regard to tax collection. The power to tax is the power to destroy, you know, Chief Justice Marshall said, and he said it well. So there's no more sensitive area of government, and that's what we need to find out. And by the way, earlier we heard some discussion from Dan Pfeiffer about, you know, whether the IRS is the appropriate body now to look into Obamacare, and he didn't sound very confident. He said, well, we'll have to look into that. So uh, to this point you made earlier about Dan Balls' article in the Washington Post, activist government, big government was promised to be able to deal with these issues, to solve our problems. Uh, I do think that's also being brought into question. Let me quickly here. follow up on that. Do you believe it's appropriate for Sarah Hall Ingram, who is the head of the tax exempt division, now overseeing the president's health care plan to remain in that position? Well, well, we don't know enough yet. Uh, she apparently was at the tax-exempt office heading it up until 2012, which was the period uh, during which this, again, bias targeting occurred that now, uh, you know, everybody agrees was, was uh, the wrong thing to do and violated taxpayers' rights. So we need to find out why she was given promotions during that period and then why she was promoted to another job uh, to take care of even a bigger uh, responsibility now the IRS is being asked to take on, which is implementing Obamacare. Senator uh, Menendez? As you know, George, with, I was involved in the 1990s in IRS reforms. With all due respect to my colleagues, it's not about changing the law. Uh, 
It is about investigating the law to make sure that it's applied appropriately and where there are hundreds of millions of dollars being used for political advocacy and to determine the outcome of election and that people can get a tax break on that when they're not supposed to, that should be investigated as well. So we don't need to change the law. We're talking about pursuing the law. And I find it interesting with my colleagues that seem far more interested in investigating than legislating. They only want to investigate certain things. Uh, and they only want to pursue these investigations to a very large degree beyond the IRS because this is not the only investigation they want uh, to have a dysfunctional Congress. But given when what's you have the Heritage Foundation, their action arm saying, "Don't bring a bipartisan farm bill to the floor because you'll distract from these investigations," the American people want us to see us legislate and solve their but problems. But do you believe that the American people, given what's happened here, the IRS is going to trust IRS oversight of the president's health care plan? Well, first of all, they have a part of the of the entire health care act, uh, and that oversight will be done by our respective committees, as well as the health education and labor committee. Uh, and what's most important is not to have 37 votes in the House of Representatives to repeal the uh, the president's health care law, which means 37 votes to stop millions of young people from being on their parents' insurance or being able to have them uh, not be discriminated because of pre-existing conditions. That didn't pursue. Any any effort to improve health care in the nation. Your response, Congressman Price? Yeah, a good attempt to try to change the subject. The fact of the matter is this is about trust. And, and Sarah Hall Ingram, who was in charge of the tax-exempt division at the IRS between 2009 and 2012, the exact time of, of this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, challenge uh, and, and affront to the American people, is now in charge of instituting and regulating and determining whether or not the IRS is doing the appropriate things as it relates to the ACA, the, the President's health care law. Remember, the IRS is the enforcement arm for the president's so you think she has law. to go? I think she at least has to step back until we get to the bottom of this. Congressman Rangel, you get the last word. There's no Republican agenda except to stop the president of the United States. It just seems to me that there's no evidence that whatever went wrong, it was known outside of Cincinnati. They should have been better trained to deal with a very sensitive piece of legislation that was abused by the left and the right. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. We'll be watching the hearings this week.